This is Ratchet & Clank, the 2002 action platformer developed by Insomniac and published by Sony. This is one of the first games I ever played as a kid, and to this day one of my favourites. This particular level is called Blackwater City, and it was one of my three favourite levels from the game when I was younger. In fact, it probably still is. Just for funsies, the other two are Jawai Resort on Pokotaru and the Gadgetron headquarters on Kalibo 3. Blackwater City is towards the end of the first third of the game, and is the final planet before you go to Quark's base and get betrayed, which kicks off the second act of the game. It's also where you find the first hoverboard race, which I absolutely adore playing, and where I spent a not inconsiderable amount of time when I was younger. This is a 3D model of me. It's technically not finished, as I need to do some more work on adding detail to both the model and textures of the clothes, but it does the job for the time being. This model is actually the protagonist of my indie game, Station 77, which you can hear me talk about in my devlog, which should be on screen now-ish. You don't actually play as me in that game. He's an independent character who just happens to use a 256 by 256 image of my face as a texture. There's two reasons for this. Reason one, I can't draw and therefore cannot invent a guy for you to play as. Reason two, I am unlikely to sue myself for improper use of my own likeness. This is the Blackwater City level from Ratchet and Clank, running in Unreal Engine, featuring that model of me. Pretty cool, right? I think if you told me at seven years old that I'd be putting a crude digital facsimile of myself into Ratchet and Clank levels, I'd likely have spontaneously combusted out of sheer excitement. So just how did I get this model from one of the true greats of gaming history onto my computer and into this game engine? Well, recently I discovered this website called modelsresource.com. I can't remember exactly how I came across it, I know I was aware of it before someone called Carrie mentioned it to me in this exchange on Twitter, shout out Carrie by the way, she's a game dev. While I was aware of the site before this, I can't remember where I heard about it, so this will have to do for the video's narrative flow, thank you Carrie. Anyhow, this website is fantastic. It, along with its sibling sites, Texture Resource and Sound Resource, are entirely run by a community of volunteers who are all working incredibly hard to archive and preserve models, textures, and sounds from video games. Obviously none of these can be used commercially, as they're all still held under their respective IPs, or should at least be assumed to do so, so don't use any of these commercially, you'll probably get in trouble. But, for non-commercial personal projects, they're absolutely fantastic. Especially as a learning resource. Basically, if you've any interest in technical game art, this is a treasure trove of things to learn from, featuring models from all over gaming history over a range of art styles and polygon counts. So I thought I'd make a quick video about how I've been using this resource, uh, some of the issues that I've run into and how I overcame them. It's a bit of a workflow and I'm using Unreal Engine as my engine of preference just because it's the one I'm most familiar with. I haven't tested this with Unity, Godot, CryEngine or a non-engine C++ renderer, but from my experience loading other F FPX files there's no reason it wouldn't work in those two, so you yeah, know, here we go. Apologies for the abrupt change in audio quality, I filmed this section as a live demo and while I thought it had gone quite well as I'm reviewing the footage I'd kind of ummed and erred my way through it so I'm re-recording this in post, but in the last couple of days the pollen count has quadrupled so I might sound a bit stuffy. Apologies for that, I'm nearly dead. Once you've found a model and downloaded it, you're going to find that the .obj file format might not be compatible with whatever engine or system you're using to load your models. Unreal Engine, which is what I use for this demo, doesn't like .obj models for instance, so first things first, I opened up a blank Blender project and imported the .obj file there. In this experiment I'm using the Metropolis level from Ratchet & Clank. This is quite a large model, so importing it into Blender takes some time. I recommend just not clicking anything while a large model like this imports. It seems like if you don't click anything, Blender doesn't realise it's technically stalled and doesn't crash. But if you just leave it for a minute, it'll import the model just fine. Take a minute to go get a coffee, or check your emails on your phone, or something like that. Once it's done, there's not a huge amount you need to do. It's worth taking the time to check face orientation from this menu up here, but even though I invert the normals here so that they're the right way around, they're still backwards when imported into Unreal. This is frustrating, and I don't know what causes it, but fortunately it's an easy enough fix. When I was originally testing this, I tried it with the normals both ways around in Blender, and it behaved identically in both orientations. In any case, this is also a good opportunity to make any modifications to the geometry that you might want to make, then simply export from Blender as an FBX like you would any other game model. Before importing them, I recommend creating a folder in your project that you're going to keep this model in. It's not so much of a problem for smaller models, but large models like this come with a lot of textures and you want them as organised as possible. Then the import process is also just the same as any other model, but here in Unreal Engine you want to find the checkbox for Invert Normals, as this means that the face is the right way around when finally imported. Otherwise things look a bit strange. This'll take a minute, but once it's done you're pretty much there, you can mess around with this. 
There's a few more optional steps, and whether or not you go through with them depend on your use case. For instance, collision settings can be useful, so uh, I recommend opening up the static mesh and setting the collision type to use complex collision as simple. This has some issues, such as getting caught on the smallest little props like these flowers here, but it's the quick and easy way of getting collision basically working. If you want to put a bit more time in here, you can disable the collision completely on the mesh and build it manually through some other means, but this is quick and easy and works, and suits my purpose just fine. Another issue you might run into is foliage looking a bit weird, or everything looking a bit plasticky. This is caused by two things. The geometry is actually two-dimensional, so it doesn't have any third dimension depth and therefore can only be seen from this way round. This is rectified easily enough by setting the foliage material to be double-sided in the material editor. The issue is finding that specific material. Now you could go through and highlight it in the static mesh editor, but I can't be bothered to do that. So I wrote this auto hotkey script. It's linked in the description, and as long as you've got auto hotkey installed in your computer, you should be able to run it. Uh, it binds a hotkey which opens the material, sets the specular value to zero, ticks the double-sided checkbox, and applies the changes. By default, it's set to the dimensions of a 1440p window, but you can use AutoHotKey's Window Spy feature to work out where on your screen the click zones you're looking for are, and change the variables just here at the top of the script. Then you can move your mouse over a material, press the hotkey, and let it do all the work. It's still quite tedious to go through all the materials like this, but it makes it a lot quicker and easier than doing it manually. I ended up binding the hotkey to F so that I could quickly and comfortably move the mouse with my right hand and quickly activate the hotkey with my left hand. Just remember to exit the script from your taskbar when you've finished. I know this seems like a great deal of faff, and I apologise for not being able to make it any easier. I couldn't get Unreal to set up a default material, which is already double-sided and has a specularity of zero, and then get the imported materials to use that as a base uh, instead of the default material. However, once you've gone through all that and saved everything, it'll look something like this. Here I'm just running around with a very default first-person Unreal character. I removed the gun and added a reticle, but other than that, it's essentially straight out of the box. Obviously this does work with smaller models too, but certainly for the Ratchet and Clank models that I've been using, remember to invert the normals on import, otherwise things get a bit headachey. It's possible to invert them in the engine, but requires this plugin called Modeling Tools Editor Mode to be enabled. It's free and useful, so worth having, but doing it on import is quicker and easier. If you do forget though, use Shift and 5 to go into modeling mode, make sure to select the mesh you want to edit, then under Attribs, set, uh, and then Normals, you'll find a check for Invert Normals. Check that, click Accept, and it'll all be good. And there we are! That's how to use assets from some of your favourite games as learning resources, as a way to see how game art has been done by some of the biggest names in the business, and how to use these models in your own personal projects. Remember, these are still protected under copyright, and just having access to them does not give you the right to use them commercially. If you use these commercially, you will be hit with a cease and desist, and possibly fines, depending on how punitive the company that you've annoyed is feeling, so be sensible, and enjoy. Hopefully this video has been fun or interesting in some way, subscribe as you're passing through. If you want to know a bit more about the character model I mentioned at the beginning, go check out my recent devlog on my indie game Station 77. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.